Welcome back to Corner Stories. Please enjoy this video and don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. And now let's get on to story 1. To start this story, I know he isn't cheating on me. He's at home more often than not and I have full access to his electronics as does he to mine. Note, some identifying details have been changed to protect my privacy such as names my husband and I have been together since we were young teenagers. We got married last year and have a 6 month old daughter together. She is the light of both our lives as we both came from broken homes and want a better life than we lived growing up. My best friend came a few years later. We used to live in the same neighborhood and casually began to hang out. She lives with both her parents and siblings as she is studying to get her bachelor's degree. At first, she didn't like my husband. Said that he was clingy and tried to insert himself into our friendship. WTF? She was civil to him because he was my romantic partner. For context, my husband is bipolar type 2, autism and PTSD and it causes him to be a little socially awkward and miss certain social cues and taboos. I love him regardless of it all. Over the last few years, we have been hanging out a lot more. She comes over for a few drinks, we go to movies, and even visit local attractions together. We all three have a good time, and my husband does try to make nights for just the two of us often, too. However, last year my husband and I found out we were expecting a child together in January. I was working and fell ill because at the time, I was working a fast food place. I threw up and went to the doctor. Come to find out, I was eight and half weeks pregnant. My life changed and I had become more busy to get myself ready for motherhood. My best friend saw me less and less and we couldn't talk as much. My husband and I got married almost month and half after discovering we were going to become parents. That's when our dynamic changed. Recently I applied to school and am currently in college trying to get a law degree so I can become a paralegal and get to law school. I'm also a stay-at-home mom while doing college, too. I've been super busy. One day my husband gets a text, and it's from my best friend. She asks if they can talk, as she was upset. He took the phone call with me protesting and a few minutes later said, Sandra, fake name, we need to go get Carla, fake name. Her father is picking a fight with her. I get upset as we were watching a movie together and I had just gotten the baby down for bed. We go to her house, which is about 20 minutes away and she stays with us for a night. As I get our daughter back down to bed, Carla asks to cuddle with the two of us in our bed. I was hesitant. I have issues with claustrophobia due to a traumatic experience as a child. My husband gave the go-ahead. We settle in for the night. Carla's dad apologized and she heads back home. Once she was gone, I blew up on my husband. What he did did not only inappropriate, but was disrespectful to my boundaries. Ever since, when she has an issue with her dad, she calls my husband and vents. One day, while my in-laws were staying with us, my MIL overheard a convo with my hubby and Carla. She was concerned and asked me if I was okay with it. I said, no, not really, but every time I bring it up, he gets defensive, saying that she needs help. That she is going through a hard time. Blah blah blah. It is important to note that my MIL was cheated on in the past by her ex, my husband's father. We are also extremely close, and she sees me as a daughter. She hates cheaters with a passion, and my husband, who I will refer to as James, was using the same excuses his father did. She asked to speak to him privately and walked to our living room. They got into a heated match and James apologized to me. He said he didn't know that it was hurting me and causing issues in our marriage. I asked him, how would he feel if I had asked him if another man could sleep in the bed with us? He kind of deflated and tried to say, it's different. Blah blah blah. His stepfather, Mark, fake name, spoke up and said, it is the same. You're uncomfortable with it. So is she. Quit with the excuses. James respects Mark quite a lot actually. Mark raised him since he was eight and his own father was in and out of the picture. Once the dust settles, my husband truly apologized to me for his actions and said that he would do better. I kissed him and that was that. However, I wouldn't be right here if that was the end of the issues. Lately, Carla has been calling him three to eight times a day. She says it's because she is bored and has no one else to talk to. I snap. I call him out over the nonchalance about the situation, how when she calls, he answers, how it is making me feel like a third wheel in my marriage, etc. His response. She's just lonely. You're letting it get to you. That night I slept in the living room. I'm starting to suspect that she is trying to monopolize his time. She calls him for over an hour each time he calls, 
they talk, she complains about her life, etc. almost like she is his girlfriend or something. I am starting to find this relationship troubling. It's getting to the point that it is affecting my marriage. Where do I go from here? Any advice would be appreciated. Edit, thanks everyone for the feedback. I'm going to have a talk with him, with his mom involved. He won't listen to me if I don't. I'm tired of fighting him over this. I should have an update with a resolution in a couple days. I'm going to read everyone's responses more thoroughly. Thanks for the advice. Edit number 2, my husband and I had a sit-down talk. His mother and stepfather weren't available. He promised me that he would explain everything in detail. I called Carla and she said that we could talk Friday when she wasn't busy with school. She had something she needed to air out. I will have an update on Friday, hopefully. Edit number 3, I woke up to a text from Carla this morning. She actually wants to talk to me tonight, alone, as her schedule has changed we are going to have a heart to heart. Hopefully I will have some news. Edit number 4, I need some time. I will post an update later on. My heart is hurting. Hubby and I are getting a divorce. Thank you for understanding, everybody. Now I'm going to get into the update soon, but what do you think of the story so far? Does OP have a friend problem or a husband problem? Let me know in the comments below, also feel free to drop me a like or subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now on to the update. This update is hard. Everything about this situation sucks and I don't know if I will be okay for some time. Baby and I are currently staying with my friend, Tanya, to start, James and I are getting a divorce. Carla is no longer a friend to me or our mutuals. The betrayal is too deep for her to be friends with our group. As most of you assumed, James and Carla are indeed having an affair. It started about three months ago and just turned physical one month ago. They were planning on just up and leaving after James served me divorce papers. They used the ruse that he was helping her through emotional issues to hide the fact. I was crushed. She wanted to clear the air before it got worse. That was when she dropped a huge bombshell. James was going to try and get me to terminate my rights to my child in order for Carla to adopt her. The reason? My borderline diagnosis a few years ago made me unfit to be a mother and he was sure that the courts would agree. She then handed me two separate stacks of paperwork and left. I am contacting a lawyer as I am writing this. I was seriously hurt. You guys were right. Carla was a snake and only told me this so she wouldn't feel guilty. However, I am not letting my soon-to-be ex-husband bully me into termination of my rights. I called him afterwards and got very heated about what was going on. James just sat there in silence. I was crying afterwards. I pleaded with him to tell me what I did wrong. For a little bit of backstory, I had a near-fatal complication with my delivery of our daughter where I bled my entire labor. I had to have two blood transfusions and haven't fully recovered from it. I was not cleared for any extraneous activity for three months, including sexual activity. James was getting unsatisfied with all my doctor's appointments and not getting the sex that he wanted. I was hurting and ended up needing another procedure to remove some placenta that didn't naturally come out. I had to have my tubes tied because if I have another child, it will kill me next time. James wanted at least two more kids and this put an end to his plans. I married a monster. We were together since we were 15 and this is how he repays me. I thought I knew him. He was acting so caring and nice to me. I am absolutely heartbroken. I'm not even sure if I am going to update this anymore, but if I do, it'll be after the divorce settles. Thanks for all your concern. I'm going to step back and take some time to adjust. There is no chance for a healthy co-parenting situation. I'm fighting for primary custody with supervised visits. Carla will not have any access to baby, as I will ask the judge to make a clause preventing her from interacting with my daughter. Thanks for all the advice. Edit, I forgot to add that I contacted his mother and Mark this morning. They are furious that James is doing this to me. They are helping me foot the cost of a lawyer because I'm a stay-at-home mom and college student. They have kicked James out and he is now staying at our old house with Carla. He did give me the courtesy to get my stuff and didn't put up a fuss about me taking what I wanted. He told me that he will keep in contact for divorce proceedings. Some relevant comments from OP Carla is wanting to change the time in which we talk. I'm willing to listen to her explanation. I want closure. My husband is staying with his parents until I am willing to speak to him. I'm drained and focusing on school and my baby right now. He didn't explain anything to me. He told Carla to do it. That's why she is rushing to talk. 
I told him if it is going where I think it is, then I am filing for divorce. This post isn't a lie. He is done with this drama. He wanted to tell me, but couldn't handle me interrogating him. He told Carla to tell me what's going on. His parents know that his actions aren't adding up, but they are still his family, so they aren't going to let him end up homeless, even if it is temporary. But they try to stay out of our marriage. Baby and I are safe. I'm currently staying with another friend. She is helping me through this difficult situation. I will post an update soon. Needless to say, I'm filing for divorce. That is what we have of this story I will be sure to post any new updates. I just want to say I wish OP gets the best lawyer she can find and protect herself and her baby, that soon-to-be ex-husband of hers is hot rubbish and he chose hot trash as his new girlfriend, I wish them the life they deserve. If they will cheat with you they will cheat on you. And now let's move on to story 2. My fiancé and I have been together 3 years and living together too, he's definitely a hot head, it's been a problem in the past, but he's a wonderful partner otherwise. He cooks, I clean, we both work and we're best friends. We spend all our spare time together going on road trips, trying new foods or just hanging out. He has in the past lost it over small things, followed someone home twice over driving and he yelled at them, he's an angry driver in general, he thinks no one can drive and is often speeding through traffic. His angry driving is an everyday occurrence. I let him drive because it's not worth the stress if I drive because he doesn't like it, he punched a hole in a closet door after a stressful day at work and I sarcastically replied to his mood. He immediately apologized when he calmed down the next day, but it scared me at the time. This was a year ago his temper is an everyday thing, but it's never directed at me. He also used to tell me to pack my things and f off if we were arguing, I'm definitely a calm let's talk this out person, he's an I don't want to talk about it person, he often feels attacked and it's something we had to work through. He's much better now, he tried anger management but said it wasn't working with his work schedule. His communication is much better. Apart from that, he's an affectionate goofball who treats me like a queen, he would do anything for me I just have to ask. It's like a different person takes over. On to the incident. We were going on a holiday this week, 12 hour road trip and we decided to leave at 3 am. He said he didn't sleep well and I annoyed him because I wasn't ready quick enough, I wasn't I forgot some things and I admit that I took too long and we left late. We stopped an hour later to grab a quick service station meat pie, I don't really remember the conversation leading up to this, I don't even know if we were arguing. All I know is his meat pie leaked on his shirt, he swore and ripped his shirt down the middle, like the Hulk, and threw it out the window. He proceeded to speed and had the angriest look on his face. I was scared, it was a dark back road and I could see he was doing 140 kilometers, I told him I was scared and to stop and he ignored me, I told him to please calm down and stop. Suddenly he slammed on the brakes and all out things in the back flew forward, he turned to look at me and said, there, before taking off again only faster doing 160 kilometers. I sat there terrified to speak up again and that we would hit something. He stopped not long after and told me to drive because he was going to sleep. He woke up two hours later and didn't say anything about it, it was an hour or so after he woke up he said sorry about before I was really tired. I'm in shock, he doesn't seem to think it was a huge deal. It's been two days and we've just moved on from it, he said nothing happened and he knows how to control a vehicle and why would he put himself in danger. I just need some advice, I'm starting to rethink this whole relationship based off this incident because I'm scared to tell my friends because they will hold judgments on him. Update. I'm so completely overwhelmed by the response from this group, I never thought I'd receive so many helpful and worried comments. I have 4 more days of this trip and since so many are telling me to VE careful I am not going to do anything until I get home. You've all shown me it's time to tell my sister and brother what's going on, they live in the same city. Thank you again for all your help, I feel so rattled, I've never once thought it was abuse, I just thought he needed help and support. Relevant comments I'm sorry that you're going through this. Please listen to us, please don't ignore what your brain and instincts are trying to tell you, please don't let the fear of judgment hinder you from seeking help to get out of a dangerous situation. Talk to family, talk to friends, reach out to people. You need to get yourself to safety, because if you stay with this man, he will endanger your life again. OP, I'm sort of in shock with these comments, I've never once called it abuse or even thought it. He just had a problem that needed to be worked through, my friends and family love him, I've never told them about this side. But now I'm starting to think I didn't tell them about his struggles because I knew what they'd say. He is not a good partner or a good guy. He's willingly putting you in unsafe positions and doesn't even like or respect you enough to stop his shitty behavior when you tell him you're scared. 
His ego is then so huge he needs to embarrass you in some sort of gotcha moment when you call out his behavior. I wish you the best honey but run. This man is a loser who is also deeply bitter. Your life will be so much better, I promise. There is no award for suffering. I know you've invested time and yourself in this relationship but put simply this man isn't even kind to you. The bare minimum should be kindness. OP, I'm finding it hard to reconcile that the man who cried when we were picking out our first dance song, who told me in the best woman he's ever met and that he feels so lucky that we met, the man who cuddles me on the couch and rubs my sore back at the end of the week is this abusive man too. His mother said he rages, their incidents are worse than anything that he's ever done with me, his mother hugged me and cried when I got him to go to anger management because she's been trying for years. His sister doesn't have a relationship with him and since being with me they have mended it and became close again, she said I seem to make him a lot calmer. I am starting to question why I never seriously questioned what he was like before me. I'm starting to wonder if the longer we are together the more that side is appearing. I'm just absolutely devastated. Update. February 26, 2024 Thank you to everyone who commented on my previous post, it's been a while since my original post and a lot has happened. The end of the relationship was nothing short of a soap opera. I spent nights in bed next to him on our holiday reading Lundy Bancroft's book and I was floored. All the comments were so eye-opening even if I didn't want to believe it was that serious. So many things were hitting home. So many things I didn't consider abuse, but these were things I wasn't telling friends or family about, I was protecting him from anyone knowing what he was really like. A part of the book referenced cheating and abusers as one archetype that matched a lot of my partner's attributes. I thought I was crazy, but over a week after we got home from our holiday he got home from work, we had dinner and he went to shower so I checked his phone. I repeated this for quite a few nights gathering evidence. He has been cheating on me, lots of different women over the last three years and currently one woman who knows all about me and likes to talk about how awful I am with him. A lot of things he thought he deleted that messenger archived. I eventually confronted him one of those nights when he was coming to bed and he told me he was too tired to talk about it and that I invaded his privacy and that they were just friends. I was so angry I pushed it, in terms of keeping the conversation going, not physically, he said he wanted to sleep and I said if I wasn't getting any sleep he wasn't either. He snapped. He punched a hole in the wall, he broke our dresser, it's destroyed, he went into the kitchen and smashed other things. It was terrifying, I was begging him to stop. He then said I was lucky something of his wasn't broken. I said why, what does that mean? He said he would have una lived me, more graphic, but I'm not sure I can post that here, I got my things and snuck to my car and went to a friend's. He called me and said not to bother coming home, I wasn't. Why would I? The next day he said it was all my fault because I wouldn't let him walk away, that I was a moron and ruined everything. That I should have let him sleep and waited until the morning. I called my brothers and said I needed to get my things. I decided it wasn't a good idea for them to come yet because I think they would have escalated the situation as they were angry too. I took my sister and friend and had them wait in the car until I was sure it was safe, he wasn't meant to be home but was. They said I had 5 minutes until they were coming in. I told him I'd come to get my things, he got emotional and said he never wanted me to see that side of him. I said we were done and he got angry again and chased me into the garage throwing pillows at me. He said I would regret not fighting for this and I asked him what I was fighting for because this wasn't how you treat someone you love. He collapsed into a crying mess and said he loved me too much and needed me, that he'd been an idiot and ruined it all. He said I could take what I wanted, that he would speak to me tomorrow when we both slept. He got upset when my friend and sister came inside because he didn't know they knew. I took the opportunity to get clothes and my brothers returned for my things two days after. He sobbed on the phone to me to reconsider, that he wasn't getting attention from me and did the wrong thing, that he's really stressed and it all came to a head. He also told me this would happen to me again and the devil I knew was better than any other. He was begging me to come home. I cut contact. Three weeks later he's posting pictures with one of the other women and in a relationship with her. I'm just floored by the turn in events. Thank you to everyone who commented, this man was an abuser and writing here saved me. Please don't date angry men, please realize if there's physical violence of any kind they're capable of worse. The cheating was a bullet I didn't see coming, I never suspected him of that ever in the whole three years and I'm extremely embarrassed of being replaced so easily and being fooled so easily. I'm living with my brother, my self-esteem is in the toilet and I guess I'm starting my life over again now. Relevant comments OOP, I can understand why, the main reason was that I told someone. It sounds silly, but after telling my friend I couldn't take it back. Seeing her horror and worry spurred me on. 
Also the idea of her disappointment if I went back, the bond was so strong, I still miss the good parts, but I know he's not a good man and I have completely ghosted him. And with that we will end the video here, these stories today were pretty rough. I don't know what to say, some people can be really horrible. I hope everyone here has a better day and you know just be gentle with yourselves and the people around you. We all need a little kindness in our lives. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to connect with each other in the comments below. Until next time, be kind, be curious, and I'll catch you in the next video. Corner Stories signing off.